Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. How are we doing? This is going to be FlossTube number 34 and it is Sunday the 20th of June. Um, how is everybody doing? I think I've already said that. It's Father's Day today here in the UK. I think as well over in America as well. So happy Father's Day to everybody um, who plays that role, whatever, however that works out in your family. Happy Father's Day. I've got lots of things to show you today. I have got two FFOs, um, one of which was a whip, things, something that I was working on, a work in progress, and the other one was just something that I randomly decided to start in the middle of the week and have actually finished off as well. Um, I have also got another cool piece of haul to show you and freebies and all sorts of various different bits of chatter. But First and foremost, I just want to say a massive congratulations to Christina from Whilst Iris Naps for the most excellent chart. Now she's been publishing sneak peeks, sneak peeks, definitely sneak peeks, not what I nearly said, <laughs> sneak peeks of this for quite some time because it's taken, she's been a big girl to stitch I think for Christina, um, but she's here for us all. Matilda Isabella Creasy. Look at that. And if you haven't watched Christina's video about the images from this sampler and about Matilda's story herself, then you need to go and, and watch that. Um, it's got so many incredible things on it. A swan, a ball, a windmill, and then that carol hymn in the middle once in Royal David's city. So, beautiful. Now the date on the sampler is July the 27th, uh, 1852. Now my birthday is July the 28th. I wasn't born in 1852, although sometimes I feel like I was born in 1852. And actually Matilda wasn't born on July the 27th either. She was born on Valentine's Day. But this is going to be my start in July for my birthday. So if anybody would like to join, I am going to be calling it the July Baby's Birthday Sal. And I'll put the hashtag along the bottom. Now, if you're born in July and you want to stitch along, that's great. If you weren't born in July and you want to stitch along, that's also fabulous. So I can't wait. I cannot wait to get started on her. She's going to be a long-term project, but absolutely fantastic. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kit up the border and a few of the main colours in the week's dye works and then either pick up the other week's dye works as I go or maybe substitute in some DMC. What Christine has done actually in the Floss Legend is to let you know those colours that really don't take very many stitches so that's the sort of thing that you could easily sub out for DMC because you're not going to see really the full effect of the uh, over dyed floss necessarily. So yeah, if you'd like to join along, I'm sure loads of people have already got this started and uh, want to stitch her. So yeah, if you'd like to join along, it's going to be hashtag July baby's birthday. So, <laughs> so congratulations again. That is, that is amazing. Right, what else have I got apart from an itchy nose? Oh, sorry. That's been, <laughs> as soon as I pressed pause, it, I pressed play, it was like, my nose is itchy. It always happens. Now, the most overwhelming response to this sampler, Betty Hawes for 1800. Now, this is the very first sampler that's been charted and released by Josie, who is Willow and Brook Needleworks on Etsy. And she very kindly gave me this sampler chart and she also gave me one to give away and I have done the draw for that this evening and the winner is Kathleen Tolbert so I'll put Kathleen's comment up in the corner there so well done Kathleen um, I will try and find your comment but there were 161 separate entries for this so I'm gonna have to scroll through and find your comment and I will comment on it I will find you and I will comment on you um, but if you see this before that then please drop me a line on my email or DM me on Instagram. I'll put my email details in the drop-down box. But 
Josie very kindly has given a code. If you didn't win, and sadly there can only be one winner, but if you didn't win and you're not Kathleen, you can have 20% off this chart. So the code is MAMA20 and I'll put that down below. So if you would like to grab this chart, and as, as I said, I know a lot of you um, have already put this in your basket, um, just in case you didn't win. So you do win a little bit because you get 20% off. So go and grab yourself Betty Horsfall. She is lovely. She really is lovely. There we go. Right, what else have I got? I keep looking over at my book because I've had to write down some notes. Right, I'm gonna put some footage in. Um, a lady had asked me a long, long time ago now, and I'm so sorry that it's taken me this long and a reminder from you to do it. But she'd asked me about what this structure is behind. Uh, and it's actually a ladder. It's a ladder that I've mounted on the wall horizontally rather than vertically to use as a set of steps. So uh, a set of steps, a set of shelves, shelves instead of steps. Um, and so I've got a little bit of footage of it just to show her and I'm sure um, other people have been wondering what exactly is going on in the background there. So I'm going to put the footage um, here. And the other thing, just reaching up to show you the, the ladder has reminded me, is I got myself a new hoodie. And now why did I get this hoodie? Because it reminded me of a picture of this plus fabric. That's why I, <laughs> I saw it and I was like, oh, I like that. I would stitch on that. So I'm gonna wear it. So it's now no longer just enough to have matching project bags and matching at various accoutrements. You have to have matching clothing to your fabric as well. <laughs> right. Let's have a look and see what I've been stitching this week. I haven't got a massive amount to show you. I've just shut that book and just shutting it's made me feel nervous because I know I'm going to forget something. Um, I haven't got a massive amount to show you, but I do have two FFOs. So I'm going to start with my first one, which is over here. And I have been taking part in the monthly Orny sale. Hashtag monthly orny sale. Now, to be honest, this has been going better than pretty much everything else that I agreed to take part in, including the EF sample sale. Although I do have plans afoot to try and get back to her. But it's going far better than my whip go, which is not going very well at all. But this is what I was working on, which is Cato Lantern from Satsuma Street. Now, you can buy these on Etsy. If you want to buy the download, it comes as a pack of four, or you can buy individual um, kits for these. So I bought a pack of four downloads and decided to stitch it just myself using various DMC out on black perforated paper. And I have finished the cat. So there he is. See if he'll is going to turn around. There we go, let's push him back that way a bit. So I have finished the cat and I absolutely loved stitching, stitching him. So I nearly had a cat face then, there we go. There's my entire cat face. <laughs> right, let's get this up close but out of the way of my face. So there he is, got a bit of a wonky sequin, there we go. Just stitched in DMC on some black perforated paper. There are some little beads. I don't know how well you can pick them up. They're little gray beads in his ruffle. And then I love, let me come a bit closer. I love the use of the sequins on the hat and on his eyes. They look amazing. And I'm just hanging him up with a little bit of um, ribbon. 
So as I said, this is part of my monthly Orny sale. And so what I thought I'd do actually was just gather up the other ones that I've stitched um, and show you those. I'm still one short based on June, but I'm, I'm getting there. So the first one that I stitched, whoops, was this one, which is from a previous edition of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. I think it may be the first Christmassy one, but if you want to know, leave me a comment and I will find I will find out. So I just made the Santa's Workshop tag with a little bit of polka dot on the back, a couple of Pantini Pantini buttons and a big old key. So that was the first one that I did. February was whoops, a Mill Hill kit and this is the Scottish Santa. For those of you who've not seen some of my earlier um, editions, my mum is Scottish. Uh, she's from a little town called Kilmores, just outside Kilmarnock. And so that is the Scottish Santa. I've also got the Welsh Santa to do as well. Um, and he will probably be in one of my Orny cells, monthly Ornies coming up. And then I did this one in March. And this is a free chart from Pinker and Pumpkin Blogspot. And I am getting so much better at saying that. It's only taken like nine months, but I'm getting there. So just the little sheep. This, I believe, is called Erin Yu. Um, and I just finished mine as a little, a little sort of drum with some pins in it. And then last month, was it earlier this month? I can't remember, to be honest. It was either last month or earlier this month. I finished a Santa face, another Mill Hill kit. And then I even remembered to put the little snowflake on. And then number five is this one, my little Catho lantern. The Mill Hill ones, I always use self-adhesive velvet on the back. And you can pick this up on Amazon. It's basically um, what jewellers would use to cover um, window display blo blocks or boxes. Um, so it's really easy to pick up. So I bought a pack that came in several different colours. So I've got black, maroon, brown. I've got all sorts of different colours that I can that I can choose from. But I've really got into doing these. I really like doing them. So I'm going to do probably another Halloween one next. I think. I think. And then my other FFO is this one which was sent to me by Lisa, who also sent me the vexation sampler. Um, and this is called Spring Whirly Gig. Now I'd wanted to do this type of finish for ages, ever since, now I can't remember which way round it was, but either Christina gave it to her um, Stitchy Bestie April from April, May, June, or April, May, June gave it to Christina, one of the two. And they had finished it, and it's actually shown on the back here, in a little, um, a little cloche. And I think it was a Halloween one. And I sort of pugged that little idea away because I thought it looked so brilliant. And so randomly this week, I just saw this sat on the side and I thought, oh, that would be a nice little stitch. So I stitched it and then I finished it with a couple of Pantini Pantini pins into a little cloche. Now this is still the natural wood and I'm thinking I might actually paint it but I thought I'd live with it just for a couple of days first of all just to see how how I got on with it um, and this is it. So what I did was I made a little sort of pincushion dome you can see it there 
just using a little bit of fabric, 32 count fabric that I had walnut dyed. And I actually finished it into the lid of a jar. And then I've got my little, gorgeous little pins in there. And it just sits on the base. Now the reason my base has got a hole in it is because mine was one of the ones that came with the little lights wired in. And the reason that I went for that one was no other, nothing else other than it was the right size. I couldn't find one that was the right size that didn't have the, the lights already wired in. So um, by the time I'd gone at it with a pair of scissors, it didn't have the lights wired in anymore. Uh, so it just sits, just sits on there. And I think I'll just leave it just sitting so that if I wanted to switch it out, I could do. And then the little cloche goes back over the top like that. And I think if I did paint it, I would probably pick out the blue and do a, a sort of a, a blue base to it. But I'm really chuffed with that, the way it turned out. Really, really happy. So just something slightly different. Let me find somewhere to put that on the window so where it's not going to fall over. And then the only other thing that I worked on this week, and you'll have to excuse this because it's really quite wrinkled, is... Oh, I always do that. I throw the pattern down and then forget to show it. This one, which is Quaker Sampling's number three by with my needle Ellen Chester and I'm stitching this on 36 count I think it's quick it's either cream or platinum with a sulky and if you haven't seen this one before I'm quite a good way into it but I did a bit more work just over here finishing up some of these motifs and then a little bit more work over there on some of those motifs. And so that's what it looks like. And I really, really enjoy working on this. It's so nice. I love working on 36 count with a sulky thread. It's just so nice to work on. So hopefully that one will be finished reasonably soon. Provided I don't do what I normally do, which is just not touch it again for ages. I've really not got the kind of longevity of working on things. I, I'm going, going good at going good and then I'll just put it down and then I won't pick it up again for a few weeks. If I could just stick, I'd be flying. Right, what else have I got? What else have I got? This, 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 this. Let's do two freebies and I don't know if I've ever done a sampler a sampler done a freebie from this this website before this blog spot it's called samplers and santas and there's lots and lots of freebies on there so uh, when I put the links for these up go and have a look and see what else you can find and I've been attracted to these two today probably because I had a bit of fabric from Patchwork Rabbit and I will show you that in a minute and you'll see why I've kind of been attracted to these two, these two. So the first one is called Bold Heart. Now you probably won't be able to see very much of, of it, but I'll put a picture of it up of how it was finished and you'll see it's just gorgeous. And I really like the fact that it's the heart shaped pillow. Um, I like having that sort of different shape, different texture of pillow, different heights, different sizes in my displays. So um, yeah, I can't wait to get on with that one. And then the second one is this one. Now, you probably can't even really see much of the design there. So I'll put the picture up of what it looks like. And you can see that um, the designer has finished it either using quite a neutral colored linen or a red. And I do actually have, that came from Patrick Rabbit, another piece of 36 count Aztec red. Now I bought a piece of this a long, long time ago for 
the entwined hearts sampler which I've now got the threads for so I've got the fabric I've got the threads I haven't got the chart yet but I'm in no hurry to start it so it doesn't matter um, but when it came I was just absolutely gobsmacked by it and so they had another little piece so I bought the other piece and then just had it with my next auto ship um, and my very last auto ship from Patrick Rabbit has come this week hence why that one came now I was chatting with Carla from Patrick Rabbit and I've been in the Picture This Plus auto ship probably for about, hmm, I want to say 18 months, it could even be two years, maybe not quite that long. But that's finishing, um, that's finishing with this, this piece of fabric actually. Let me show you that and then I'll explain the rest of the story. So this is a gorgeous blue. Look at that, against that jumper. <laughs> so that is a gorgeous blue. It is called Twilight. So I get a fat eighth, 36 count Edinburgh linen. There we go. Now I'm gonna have to insult my book about this again, just to make sure that I tell you the right thing. So. That fabric club is finishing. That was the very last piece um, to, to come from the fabric club. But Carla's very keen on looking at another fabric club, looking at starting another fabric club. But the difficulty is that a lot of the dyers are quite far behind with their fabrics. So what Carla's looking to do is to put together a fabric club which takes the best from lots of different fabric dyers. So Keep an eye out on Patchwork Rabbit for that. So when that's finalised, she'll obviously let everyone know the details. It may be every month, it may be every two months. She actually said she's been waiting for some week's dye work fabric for over a year now. So um, we all know what trouble the dyers have had with fabrics and things like that. So keep an eye out on Patchwork Rabbit's website if you would be interested in being in some kind of um, a fabric club. And as soon as she's got it finalised, she will let everybody know the details. And the other thing she mentioned to me, um, and she's looking for a little bit of feedback really, she's also thinking about doing some thread clubs. So maybe for the Avera Soir 103, um, the little spools, or maybe for the Soir d'Arger, or maybe for Valdani. But I'm sure if you've got any ideas, she would be really, really interested to hear of any sort of clubs that you would like to see um, from Patchwork Rabbit. So either drop them an email or if you want to comment below I'll make sure that she knows that there might be some comments there that she might want to have a look at so um, yeah any clubs that you think you'd like to be a part of that you think other people would like to be a part of drop them down below or send an email into um, Patchwork Rabbit and they'll see what they can do right 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 so I've kind of segued a little bit into haul and I do have some other haul. I've got one piece of really, really awesome haul. Um, shall I show you that next? Yeah, okay. So, I bought another sampler. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it would also appear that I had put the corner of the sampler underneath the camera. So I bought another sampler and she appeared on eBay and somebody wanted £10 for her starting price or buy it now for 15 and I was like oh, no she's got to come and live with me she's got to come and live with me for £15 she's got to come and live with me and so the other reason that I liked this sampler was because she reminded me a lot of Thursa Hudson and I'll put a picture up of Thursa's uh, sampler there and the other thing that I liked about this sampler is that I thought I would stand a reasonable chance of being able to find the girl because there was some good information about her on her sampler. I don't know if you remember me showing you the Mary Ann Appleby sampler that I bought a couple of weeks ago. I'm really struggling to find to find her actually. I thought she'd be easy because of her name but not quite so. But this girl, let me show you her. This is her sampler here. So apologies, obviously it's got non-reflective glass on it. It's been in this frame a while, but not, not that long. It's not 
the original frame or anything like that. And you can see that she's got an alphabet up the top or the ma majority of a, uh, one full alphabet and then the majority of another alphabet. And then her name is M.A. Denny and she stitched this sampler in 1880 when she was 14 years old and it says she was born on October the 14th. And then it says at the bottom, the Lord is my shepherd. And you've got those two cool floral bits there. Floral bits, I'm sure there's a better name for it. And then the basket in the middle with the two doves and various other little bits of doodads around the place. Now when she was advertised, I didn't really notice the colours, but there are some amazing colour changes in some of these strawberries in the border and also kind of in the letter works as well. Really, really nice. Now, M.A. Denny turns out to be Maria Ann Denny. And I thought, having her birth date, I thought that will be easy. That will be really easy to find her. And actually, it wasn't. Because what I found from looking on ancestry.co.uk, that is the thief of time, by the way. Uh, yeah, if you've got 25 hours a day to look on it, that's what it will take. It's, oh, you can find out so much cool stuff. But I thought having, let me just find somewhere I can put her back down. Oh, she's not going to fall over. I thought having her actual birth date would really, really help. But it turns out that very often their birth date wasn't recorded. I found much, much more likely that their baptism or christening date would be recorded. Um, and there were quite a few M.A. Denny's who were born in 1886. But lots of them had a baptism date before her birthday. And so I actually found her because of her baptism, and she was baptised on the 6th of January, 1887. 18, no, I'm going too far, 1867, let's get this right. Let's get it right, yeah, 1867. Sorry, because she was stitched it in 1880. Her birthday is in 1866, she was baptised in 1867, there we go. And she was from, let me get this right again, uh, Gravesend, and her parents were called Robert and Celia. She married a man called Walter Mann on the 25th of September, 1886. And incidentally, the 25th of September is my parents' wedding anniversary. And she had five children, Walter, Constance, Ernest, Frank and Herbert. And the last I can find of her is in the 1911 census and she was in Wolverhampton then. So she went from Gravesend via Banbury. A couple of her children were born in Banbury to Wolverhampton but I can't find any any death date for her yet so I'll keep looking but I'm so pleased to have her she's actually much bigger than I thought she would be and I just feel that I think she's come to a nice place to live I think she's come to somewhere nice to live so yeah super pleased to have her Ooh, I'm knocking things over now and a couple more bits of haul. I bought some charts. Shocker. <laughs> I bought some charts on Etsy. And I'm really sorry, but I didn't save the person who I saw this on. But somebody on Etsy was stitching that. Or had printed that off to stitch. And I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I went looking and found Stitching Spell on Etsy and they were having a 50% off sale. And I was like, well, marvellous. And there's that one. That was number one that I bought and I actually ended up buying five altogether. Now, I have to admit, when I buy charts from Etsy, especially for if it's from somebody that I've never bought before. The first thing I do is really critically look at the charts and try and make sure that I've not seen them somewhere before. 
and sometimes you think oh that reminds me of or similar to um but a, a couple of these reminded me of other charts that i'd seen but when i went and found those charts to look at them again freshly they were different they were really different so uh yeah i just I just like to do that because i know on etsy that there's a lot of um shall we say not very genuine folks but these ones are brilliant so this is the next one that I picked out. Now I think that I'm actually going to stitch that on the red and I might do a bit of a colour conversion and stitch it on the red because again a long long time ago I saw somebody who had stitched um, one of the Plum Street Samplers Fractor Birds on red and it looked amazing. So I picked up that one. I also picked up this one. Now, I can't remember if these charts have individually got names. They must have, but they're not actually printed. No, they're not actually printed on the, on the charts anywhere. That one? No, I think that's lovely as well. And again, I think I might do a little bit of a colour conversion, just because I don't want quite so much orange on mine. I like the orange, but not maybe quite so much. So I love that one. This one I thought was really super cute. And I even think I may end up stitching them individually. I really, really like the house. I love the bird pulling the cart. And I like the girl and the, and the owl. So I don't know. I might end up stitching it together. I might end up pulling it apart and doing some smalls. And then... I found this one as well. Now what attracted me to this is actually the diamond shape in the middle and Susie Reno on her floss tube she's got some similar shelves to mine behind me she's got more of these sort of floating wrong way floating floating I can't do it floating picture shelves and one of hers is a diamond shaped um, stitch so it's obviously a square but it's it's on the diamond and so I really like that. I'm not sure actually how much I would do of the border, whether I would just do the bit in the middle. But I really like that. And then a couple of other bits of haul that I picked up. Again, a little bit random. I picked up this from TK Maxx. And I thought it was just a nice little, nice little container for putting various other bits of smalls and pillows and, and things like that. Because they're starting to need to be piled up a little bit now. Um, but I like that look. I like to see them, lots of them together. So I picked up that one. And I picked this up as well. Now this was in one of our local sort of second-hand house clearance thrift type shops and it was 650. Now this is an old-fashioned um, what do you call them a bobbin or a shuttle for a weaving loom and let's just take the price tag off of it. I've been looking at these for ages because they quite often come up on eBay in various places and they're actually normally much more expensive than £6.50 and I've been like Ooh, what can I do with it what can I do with it now very often there is a a central piece still in here which would have the thread or, or where you would put the thread but this one doesn't have it so I was like right well okay I'm pretty sure I can use that in some kind of stitching display so I have a couple of ideas first idea is actually to sort of mount it on the wall like that and just use it now we'll see if I've got any balance just use it as like a mini floating shelf like that which let's get this out of my way which i think would look super cool i really like that idea the other thing oh, i didn't get it down but it's not always possible to frame everything i haven't got the space i haven't got the money to do it so what i thought i could do would be to mount my stitching so to lace it as if i was going to um, to frame it or to pin it as if I was going to frame it and actually 
use that and stand it in the tray so it would help it stand stand upright like that and so it could just sit in there on the side on my sh on my shelves on my ladder and it would just sit in there my one real thought i guess is having it as like a mini floating shelf but i thought well for six pound fifty i'll get it i'll give it a go i'll see what happens to it and that's it from me and uh, I shall see you next week. I hope you have a lovely stitchy week. I hope the weather is kind to you. I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen here in Wales. Probably all four seasons again by the time we get to next weekend. Stay classy, Stitchers. <laughs>